Go. Okay. Uh, I just want to ask real quick. Uh, how many of y'all still? Uh, me, how many of y'all enjoy going to the Texas Tech football games, even though our season may not exactly be one of the best that we've had so far? Okay. Most people love going to the games, and um, this being said, as um, Bob told us earlier, that. Um, Football is a very big sport, as well as like basketball, baseball, hockey. These are some of the bigger sports that you see in America. Now, what I want to talk to you about today is a littler sport, well, littler, uh, tennis. Tennis is actually a uh, more watched worldwide sport than uh, American football may be. And I want to talk to you all today about uh, why you should participate more in tennis. Um, I am a credible speaker towards this because I've been a fan of tennis my entire life. Uh, I played whenever I was younger, and my dad uh, actually played semi-professional tennis uh, growing up and uh, played until his late 30s. Um, and so today I'm going to talk to you about what tennis really is, how it compares to bigger sports in America, and uh, why you should go out and participate in some way or another. Okay, so tennis is a globalized sport in which uh, two or four players, depending on if you either play singles or doubles, hit a hollow rubber ball across court over a stretched net. Um, and the objective is to win either two out of three sets or three out of five sets, depending on gender, usually in the big, bigger tournaments. And um, from here, uh, I just use this so you can get a picture of the net because it's going to have it. But from what you do is whenever two players talking about singles will stand on either side and the tennis player will serve the ball across court into this, the opposite um, square towards the other player and you play from there on. In singles, uh, they play through these lines and so therefore here is out. And then this line is made specifically for doubles. Uh, and the objective is to, uh, again, win two out of three or three out of five sets. Um, so the scoring in it is very unique. Um, you win a game, um, which is the main point in winning sets. Uh, you win a game by winning four points. And according to Dean Snyder, there are synonyms named in tennis for these specific points, which is if you have zero points, you're said to have love. One point is 15. 2 points, 30, 3 points, 40, and then the fourth point is called game. If both players have three points in the game, then it goes to a deuce, and then you will go until one person wins on an advantage, which is whenever you win another consecutive point after um, deuce. Uh, to win a set, you must be the first to six games winning by two. Um, if it's 5-5, five, five, the player may win 7-5 they'll go to an extra set. But if both players end up 6-6, six, six, they will go to a tiebreaker in which is the first person to win seven points by two. Um, and uh, the last set of a match will go until the person wins by two sets. And here I have a picture of uh, John Isner in Wimbledon three years ago beating Nicholas Mahout 6-4, 3-6, 6-7, 7-6, 70 to 68, which is the longest match in tennis history, and it lasted 11 hours and 7 minutes. Okay, and so now I want to compare it to other sports. Um, talking about uh, other sports that some people uh, compare it to, uh, it may not be the strongest or most endured sport as, say, swimming or football power and uh, endurance. But I'm going to talk to you about how it does compare relatively easily to all of these sports. So first I will talk about the endurance sports, such as swimming, running, basketball, and hockey. Um, while it doesn't create the most stamina and agility as such swimming, which is said to be one of the hardest sports since it uses every muscle in your body, um, on average, uh, according to uh, the Wall Street Journal, matches last anywhere from two to three hours, which does take a lot of stamina and energy. It also is said to have some of the most non-down time amongst major sports, uh, where you get about 20% um, actual playing time as compared to football, where it's only about 10% of the game has actual action. Um, and now comparing it to power sports, such as football, baseball, powerlifting, and boxing, 
Um, now, it's obviously, it, you use a lot more strength in football yes. uh, and baseball with hitting the ball and stuff like that. But it creates a lot of, you need a lot of strength in order to hit the ball past your opponent quickly and efficiently. And um, according to ITF for the International Tennis Federation, Samuel Groth has the official fastest serve in history of serving a ball 163 miles per hour. And now I'm going to tell you why you should participate in, um, in tennis. Uh, it's a very fun sport to participate in by either watching or playing it. It's very easy to go out with your friends and just pick up a game uh, and, and, and enjoy the time that you're having. It's also a great form of exercise in case you're trying to go out and get a nice cardiovascular and strengthening exercise. Um, and it's also very fun to watch in case uh, you're on, it's just a lazy Sunday and you just want to watch TV or something like that. It's very fun to watch and pick your favorite players and have a, um, a uh, that. And so in conclusion, tennis is a fun and easy sport to pick up on. It compares easily to other sports because it can be just as competitive and easy to participate in. And it's exciting to go out and play as well as to watch on just a lazy day. And this is why I think that you should participate in tennis more. Thank you.